The government yesterday stunned the markets with an unexpectedly low fiscal deficit of 5.1%. And the assumptions were not very ambitious in terms of growth of the economy, uh, the nominal GDP or the tax buoyancy assumption. What were the calculations behind it and behind the strategy of austerity? I have with me one of the brains behind the budget math. We have with us the Finance Secretary, Mr. Somanathan. Thank you very much for your time, Mr. Somanathan. Well, first up, what is the strategy of uh, bringing the fiscal deficit so much lower? I mean, 80 basis lower. You could have taken the liberty of a little more expenditure and actually stimulated consumption perhaps. Why did you all prefer this alternative? So, I think, first of all, I think this notion that in normal non-pandemic times, the government has some obligation to stimulate consumption as opposed to stimulating capital investment is something that I contest. I mean, I don't think there's any obligation on government beyond looking after the poor and the vulnerable, which is a separate task, which the government always has and must do. But if you remove the poor and the vulnerable from the equation, stimulating consumption is not per se a normal activity of government. It was a necessary activity during a pandemic. It was a necessary activity when everything else had stopped. But otherwise, I think the government's duty is on the one hand to promote growth and development, and on the other hand to look after the vulnerable and those sections of society that need government support. I think we have done both in this budget. And I'm not, therefore, one of those who feels that every time some, you know, fast-moving consumer good company sees a problem with quarterly sales, government has to step up and give them more money to spend. I mean, I, that's somehow not the way I think of budgets. I, I, I mean, it's a perfect argument. Uh, and I would be normally on the side of, you know, austerity. Even 5.1 plus 3 percent is 8.1. And we have a lot of work to do. And that point is taken. But at this point in time, consumption recovery from COVID is still uneven. Uh, there are definitely more vulnerabilities and, and yeah. you have elbow room. You have this big $25 billion of FPI money that will flow in because of index. Are they going to give it to us as a grant? No, they are not. So it will be a loan which we will have to service and pay. It will be part at to. the same interest rates that but we service. So that's a source of financing. That doesn't give us any elbow room fiscally. It just means that there are more people willing to buy our bonds. No. And on which they expect to be paid interest. Oh, absolutely. I'm not taking that away. Yeah. But, you know, if that money were not there, you would have to perhaps... We have not counted up. on that money at all in any of our budget math. We are not even looking forward to it. That's an incidental thing that's happening on its own. We didn't even seek inclusion. We got included. It's coming. How much will come? I don't know. I'm not particularly worried about how much comes or doesn't come. Nothing we have done is based on their coming. So they come if they want, they don't come if they no, don't want. I'm not saying and that you would stitch the domestic policy yeah. to a 25 billion yeah. coming or not, not at all. But this year you were fortunately placed, plus there is unevenness in consumption. I you don't think the government is capable of sorting out all consumption unevennesses in the economy. I, I, I just don't think, I don't think these things work. Okay. I think the government has to be focused on development, on helping people improve their lives, and we are looking at the long run. We are not looking at the short run. The budget speech is very clear. Everything yes. is oriented towards 2047. If you want to run a marathon, and it is a marathon to reach yes. 2047, become a developed country. To run a marathon, uh, uh, it's a phrase that I used a, a while ago. I think you have to be fiscally fit. And to be fiscally fit, we have to prepare ourselves for that long run. We can't do things that are in the short run not essential. Uh, if we want to focus on the long run. And Perhaps. I'm not sure that really stimulating short-run consumption through you know, some new form of subsidy or something which is very difficult to roll back is the kind of thing that governments should do. Okay. No, that's a fair point. You don't want to run on steroids. You have to be uh, yes. fiscally fit. But We have improved on uh, our fiscal um, deficit without cutting back on any consumption and whatever level of consumption we are uh, sorry without cutting back on any expenditure mm. so we have not cut back mm. you can argue about how much we have increased oh, yes. say it could this be is entirely more. a revenue generating so it's not in cut. that sense a recessionary or contractionary or austerity budget no no it's not no it's not it it, it, it is just that you could have thrown a crutch if needed but let me come to uh, another issue uh, the way the expenditure uh, the department functions, you have been very strict in terms of releasing money. Now, that's creating an illiquidity problem in uh, the money markets, although there is durable liquidity. 
but there is an interbank deficit. It's, oh. uh, no, I think that is not a proper characterization. There is a cash balance, but half of it belongs to state governments. Now, yes. I don't know why state, it, it's their property. They park it with us in the form of treasury bills and we pay interest on it. But I'm essentially, they're acting as a banker there to state governments. the other half with you. The other half with us is a necessity if the bond markets would like to have steady weekly auctions and not variable amounts coming every week, which is what the RBI tells us they prefer. They tell us that they prefer to have a steady planned flow with a calendar that's around. So if there are short term cash flow fluctuations, we are not exercising the option of changing our auctions every week in order to optimize our liquidity. Yes, yes. We will be ending our borrowing program shortly and our peak expenditures happen between February 15th and March 31st when so, we don't have any borrowing program. So how else are we supposed to manage our cash if we want to both please the bond market by giving a steady weekly auction and vacating space for the states in the last six weeks and not having an excess cash balance. It's an impossible trinity. We can't, and it's not our fault if there is lack of liquidity because we are not overspending, we are not overborrowing, we are not taking more from the market. We are not underspending. We will, be, we will reach the expenditure numbers which we have given you in the budget. It is not my job in the central government to manage liquidity for six weeks. It's not a li liquidity is not my problem. No, I agree it's not. Yes. But I'm just saying that this is an ins ultimately you you know we will be spending the, the monies that we have said we will be spending. And if we have to maintain steady weekly auction numbers, it is not possible for us to avoid short-term uh, peaks and troughs in our cash balance. I, know, I agree that for the la last six weeks you don't borrow and so you have to have uh, you know, cash balances. But you all have been running cash balances for a pretty long time now. And therefore, uh, you know, RBI is uh, uh, kind of having to manage an illiquidity issue. The bond markets more than RBI. Are, uh, you would, uh, we can talk to RBI about having a more variable bond borrowing calendar. Oh, we can vary it every week so that we can calibrate it to next week's cash balance. That would be helpful to us. Yes. We would then pay less interest. Yes. Because yes. we are unnecessarily paying no, no, interest I, I, by maintaining a steady flow of bond issuance. My Perhaps sense we could is have the bond market more variable more... bond issuance would help us manage our cash flow. Is it because is it we cannot, cards? just to please the bond market, we can't release money that is not being spent in the States. We can't say, look, bond market's having a problem. Will you please dump this money on somebody who's not yet received, uh, ready to receive it? Can't be done. Okay, but is there a so plan So just-in-time management means that money is released when the money is required. If the money is not required, I can't release it just because the bond market would benefit or the liquidity would benefit. I agree. But are you planning any variable uh, bond issuance? No, it's a pro point that you've brought up. If it is a serious issue, I'll be happy to take it up with the RBI. Okay. See if well, variable issuance can help calibrate this better. The, the liquidity but is... But I don't know if that would be good overall for the functioning of the No, market. I don't think they'll be very happy with it. That will be two uncertainties uh, yeah. for the bond yeah. markets. Uh, I, I can see that. There is this whole page on... Uh, a, a, a abstract of receipts. Yes. Now, it's very clear, you know, how the debt receipts come, market loans, T-bills. Uh, there's one item called other receipts, which is surprising because this year it has given you 78,200 crore and next year it is minus 30,000. Yeah, these are fund transfers. See, these are non-cash items where we have something called a public account. Yeah. Government of India has a consolidated fund and yes. a public account. We are required for certain cesses that we levy, such as the agriculture. It's basically a technical adjustment. I, I, it's, it's not, but that is the effect on cash flow, is what is reflected there. This year, we, are, we have an agriculture and infrastructure development cess. We have something called a central road and infrastructure financing cess. We have something called a Madhyamik and Uchatar Shiksha Kosh, which is also a... Uh, the, the C and AG has said that if there is collection, these should first be rooted into a fund account in the public account. And it can then be used to settle amounts in years when you want to use it to pay off something. Oh, in those schemes, those specific schemes which are earmarked, Madhyamik and Uchatar Shiksha, oh. or etc. This year, there were past years when we have not made payments into these funds. Okay. So we are making up for some of those past payments based on the CAG's advice that you have short paid this amount into the CES fund. So but there is an the excess. The doubt I year. got is yeah. that are you using the CES money for things other than uh, you no, know no, education? We can't. Yeah. Okay. We can't. It is used only for? Each one is used and there is a detailed accounting if you oh. want to go into the oh, demand sure. books you can go no. into the demand books and see. The Comptroller and Auditor General no, no. audits our books so no, we no. can't use
Madhyamik cess for roads. No, we can't use road cess for Madhyamik Shiksha, etc. There is an accounting procedure. Okay, okay. But no, we no, have in I the past not this. completed the credits. These, some of these cesses are new. So there's been a lag between the levying of the cess and the accounting for the cess. Okay. So we are now depositing those arrears into okay. the cess. So this year it is an expenditure, but it's yes. not cash. So it's a source of financing. Okay. Next year, some expenditures are being met from that cess. So then it is not it is an it is a it is an it's a reduction of expenditure next why is it so difficult to divest public sector banks market capitalization has doubled it's almost a hundred percent increase year on year and entire I'm public you sector have to ask this question to my colleague Tuhin Khan Pandey who has more detail but I'll tell you what he says and uh, no first there is a policy issue which you're raising and then there is the practical issue on the policy issue, there's been no change to the government's policy. The policies announced remain, but execution takes time. You know that IDBI Bank is a complex, it's currently pending with the Reserve Bank in terms of getting their, uh, some of their, uh, uh, that's Fit my, uh, uh, I don't know uh, what exact stage it is in, but I, it is my belief that the matter is currently with the Reserve Bank. They're awaiting a, a regulatory clearance from them. So those transactions are on. Uh, the, nothing has stopped. I mean, whatever is on is on, it's going on. But what we have changed is the presentation of the numbers. We are not presenting a separate number for yes. disinvestment. We've taken a policy decision that we don't use disinvestment as a means of funding our fiscal re requirements. That we will use disinvestment as a part of our larger public asset management strategy, maximize our value. If maximizing value conflicts with fiscal management, then maximization of value takes priority. We are not going to say, we need this much cash from you this year to fill the budget hole. So you have to sell the shares by 31st March, which we used to do at one point of time. We don't do that anymore. So we are saying, look, pressure is off. You give us resources as dividend, give us resources as disinvestment, give us resources to boost the economy by incurring capital expenditure, three different purposes for which public sector enterprises can be used. So in certain cases, we may actually opt for a lower dividend if they need it for capital expenditure. We may opt for a higher dividend. We may sell the share. What this is, the, the idea is to maximize the value that we can get from our public sector assets by de-emphasizing the short-term fiscal imperative. This is excellent answer. I'm not denying all these. All these are well taken. But still, when the markets are in a fine position, and it is the stated position of the government that it does not want to stay in certain yeah. areas yeah, yeah. beyond two or four, yeah. two or three strategic uh, companies, then why are you not using the opportunity that the market is giving? There seems to be a serious execution block I am not blocking. sure. Well, execution of disinvestment is difficult. I don't deny that. I think it's very difficult to execute disinvestment in a country whose political economy is as, uh, you know, shall I say, complex as India's. So that is an issue. Execution is an issue and it, it's something that we will tackle. But as of now, I think we have the numbers that we have. You know, something that has given you buoyancy. What is giving this buoyancy? Is it that you are using some artificial intelligence and machine learning to be able to... It's a combination uh, of many factors. First, I would say, again, people have um, perhaps forgotten, but a lot of this work started in 2017. After the demonetization deposits, there was a huge trail of information that, you had. that had become available. And that, that data was mined. And it was mined using a word which was less well known then, but was known even then, which is artificial intelligence. <laughs> so artificial intelligence was used even then. And it started, notices went out to lots of people who had previously not been filing returns or had been filing disproportionately low returns. So that process takes time. That is one of the reasons that return filing has increased and return filing amounts have increased. But that's a long process. In the recent past, some of the systemic improvements like um, reporting your own data back to you before you file your return okay. has also improved compliance yes. substantially. People, yes. Some people may have forgotten things that they earned. It's possible. And some people may have deliberately forgotten. But both of them are now reminded. Yes. So the voluntary compliance has improved. And uh, there have been a number of other system improvements as a result of which I think we are seeing. And the increased coverage of tax deduction at source and tax collection at source is another factor. Then why are you not assuming that kind of an income tax growth for this year also? Well, it's something that we don't want to count our chickens before they hatch. We want to be conservative. Is this a one-time improvement because is of these I'm improvements? Or is it going to be a... So we are only expecting 11.5% growth next year. Exactly. 
because we're not sure where, see income tax suppose it's a base with... suppose i have traditionally under reported by 10% the new system has made me go back to 100 so that's factored into this year okay. will there be a further 10% growth next year i don't know i mean why would i count that chicken yet i mean we know that there's been a step improvement currently but you cannot is do. that a recurring feature or would that be a one time correction we are not going to have a new system next year yes so yes. does the new system create that impact one time and thereafter it grows mm. uh, in proportion to the economy or is there going to be a further step correction i wouldn't know yes. we don't want to hazard too optimistic a guess okay. we want to be conservative well you are a great observer of the economy as well what is your sense is this seven uh, something which is possible for next year i mean there are global headwinds already if you looked at the uh, G, uh, you know personal final consumption expenditure in the nso numbers it's only 4.4% and you are taking away a bit of the fiscal crutch so uh, how do you see the economy next year will it be able to withstand all see, this i would say this i don't think we are uh, i think we are not giving the economy a better fiscal crutch yes. we are retaining the crutch that it has so it's uh, we have not reduced capital expenditure we have not reduced revenue expenditure we have in aggregate terms in real terms there's no contraction in expenditure so the current growth has been sustained with this level of expenditure so i think that level of growth will continue will it be 7% i wouldn't want to hazard a guess i and i think it will be above 6% definitely oh of course Oh, of course. That that's not to be doubted. I'm counting on it being above six okay. percent. That's all I'm counting on from a fiscal perspective. <laughs> Then it has to be a four and a half percent inflation. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the which is not perhaps ridiculously low or high. No, no, it's not. Yeah. I mean, that's what or we high. Had a, I think that's the reason. We had a minus WPI uh, all of last year. But I don't think that will continue this year. Mm. So therefore, I don't think can... statistically it's likely that you'll have a second year of no, WPI contraction. No, no, no. Contraction. In fact, it will be higher because exactly. of the low base. Exactly. So okay. So let's look at okay. Then you're, you're, we, we should not assume four plus three and a half. We could assume six and a half plus. Four. Any terms. combination: six plus four and a half, six and a half plus four, okay. seven plus three and a half. No, some have betted on seven, so I wanted your opinion. Sorry. Some people have betted on seven percent GDP, isn't it? I think. I am not is. necessarily betting on seven okay. percent. I am betting on it being better than six percent. What is troubling uh, private capex, according to you? And second, <laughs> why didn't you give a little more crutch? You could have done twelve percent easily. You on... could have done twelve lakh crore, twelve uh, twelve percent growth in. Uh, you yeah, know, we, could have, we could have chosen to have a higher deficit and give a bigger, bigger exactly. crutch, or to have a lower deficit. We are committed to reaching our deficit targets in 2025-26, and we don't think uh, backloading a con consolidation is as easy as it appears. We are quite committed to our uh, consolidation. We are also committed to adequate capital. I don't have any, you know, approved requests for funding from central ministries which are unfunded. nothing is there a problem of absorption of capex is there a consumption a bandwidth to be able to spend it is traditionally uh, you know government capital expenditure is in long gestation projects yes. they take time to ground and we are a democracy we take time to acquire land we take time to give environmental clearance we have people agitating against both of them it's a democracy it's natural it should happen so in such an economy the gestation period between committing to a project and actually spending money is long so in that kind of economy taking a decision and actually seeing cash being committed there is a there is a lag so there is an absorption issue that we can't suddenly you know it's not like um, the only expenditure which you can guarantee will happen this fiscal year to give the economy a particular calibrated stimulus is if we put money into people's bank accounts yeah. even that is not guaranteed to stimulate spending because you can go into saving so there is actually the government has limitations in terms it's not some magic machine which will you know if, even if we were to put money into bank accounts how do you know it won't go into sips no and will go into consumption it may not it may go into sips may not so, be uh, you know even so, this year your yeah. capex is not entirely reached i mean you're falling short yeah, by yeah, about yeah, yeah. a few thousand 30000 crores correct 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 so is was that an absorptive issue it, partly an absorptive issue partly an issue that some of the state capital expenditure is conditional on reforms for example we have a certain amount that is conditional on power reforms if a state doesn't do it they don't get the money so if a state takes a decision that we prefer not to carry out this particular condition 
we don't want the money, then we don't give them the money. Now, one could argue that you should be more liberal so that the macro economy will do better with more consumption that if you don't have any conditionality. So we should tell them, please encourage consumption by giving more freebies or uh, that we have chosen not to do. Okay, okay, sir. So, uh, I mean, there is a short term, long term trade off. Everything cannot be decided on the short term. Okay. If money can be given for free, then more money would be spent so this money. year, but less reform would be done in the states. Well, uh, I mean, I, I would give a lot of respect even to state governments and their political uh, uh, preferences. Yes, yes, yes. So, so uh, we respect that. Okay. They, they are free to make their choices. Okay. But the money will not be given if a particular reform is Yeah, even then there is more money with you all also because you will have chosen to tax a lot by way of cess. If, you all, if that cess is not shareable, if it all that had gone through taxes, maybe you would not be in this position. But then maybe we will have to have less expenditure on our side. Even without that, there is a rising cess uh, compared to say 10 years ago or there 20 years ago. There is also devolution. Absolute devolution amounts have risen very substantially over this period. Well, I, I don't want to argue for the states, but I think they will prefer shareable oh, sure devolution than the finance commission to take a view It's on. a grant issue. Yeah. In F525, yes. uh, when a new term starts, what do you think will be the next generation reforms? What Again, would you I think, like? I think I don't want to preempt the regular budget where the okay. minister has said you will get uh, okay. the, the details. Okay. Well, a final question. You have uh, the, delivered extremely well in terms of uh, uh, you know fiscal deficit. So. Is it, what would you therefore want the reserve? Really, there's one thing I wanted to add on CES, since you brought it up earlier just now. CES can work both ways. This year, the states have benefited from a 16.5% increase in devolution against a tax collection increase of 12.5%. Why is that? Because last year's cut in the CES on diesel and petrol was entirely on the center. Because the CES was entirely on the center. So if in times of trouble the center levies a CES which was done in 21-22 and used, among other things, for COVID vaccination, maybe other activities that the states wanted the centre to do. When the price was cut last year, it was cut entirely by the centre. No, that that's was a fair entirely point. by the centre. That's so a fair point. That is why this year, devolution growth is 16.5%, tax growth is 12.5%. Mm -hmm. No, that's so a fair it point. It works both it ways. It works both ways in both. some cases, not in all cases. Which cases does it not work in? Okay, well, that will that'll, that, that'll require a lot of time. In, in, okay. I mean, there are several other cesses, you know, that Kisan, Garib those Kisan, and said, all which were... These cesses have been there since independence. Cesses and surcharges were not imposed in 2014. They've been imposed from time immemorial. This has been a constant argument between states and centre for 75 years. Okay. Multiple finance commissions have opined on this. And it is a continuing issue in center state uh, finances. It's not new. Okay. And cesses were very substantial right from 2004, when the largest cesses were imposed. 2004, you had a particular level of cess with 32% devolution. In 2014, you had a higher level of devolution and a higher level of cess. Yes. But the net transfer to states has increased since the 14th Finance Commission, despite the higher level of cesses. This is provable. You can see the report okay. of the 15th Finance Commission. Okay. I will leave it at that. Thank you very much for your time. And here's wishing that uh, FI25 indeed turns out to be as good a year as FI24. <laughs>